Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and of course BeamNG Drive. Today's build is going to be something extra special. We are doing one of my Discord challenges. So how these things work is you design a car or build a car to a certain spec, to a certain set of rules that we have for the challenge, and then you send the car in and I test the car in a live stream and uh, drive them head to head against every other car that everyone submitted to see which one's the fastest around whatever track uh, we are testing on. So the theme for this one is 2020 Group B as you probably can tell by the thumbnail. Um, so what is 2020 Group B? Group B doesn't exist in 2020 or 2021 I guess. Um, so it's 2020 model year, it's Group B themed. So imagine if Group B still existed in the year 2020. So basically absolutely insane amounts of power, insane amounts of performance, insane amounts of speed but in a modern package. Um, so what we have in front of us is a Ferrari body. I think this is based on, this one's based off the 612 or the Ferrari F430. This is like a front engine version. Uh, there's also mid-engine ones. I think it's also maybe based off the Ferrari 360. Um, so it, it's definitely a Ferrari body. We're going to make a front engine rear wheel drive. It's not going to be the best car, but it's going to be really cool. Um, so we're going to design this car. If you guys want to enter in the challenge and see the full rules, uh, join the Discord link in the description and check out the rules in the hashtag Community Challenges Drive channel in the server. I'll also post a picture of the rules on the screen if you guys want to build along to that. Uh, but you have to join the Discord to find out where to submit the cars, etc. So, we have this 2012 body. we got to go to 2020. We don't want 2012. We want the best tech possible. It's going to be carbon fiber panels. That might sound expensive. And it is, but it's gonna be it's gonna be light. Hopefully, quite light at least. Monocoque chassis. Um, I was actually looking here, so we can go for glued aluminum is reasonably priced. We can also go for sp or semi space from aluminum, which is actually about the same price as glued aluminum. So it depends on what we choose. Um, we're gonna go for a front mounted longitudinal engine. We can go mid engine in this thing. <laughs> that seems like weird proportions, but okay. It's going to be a front engine rear wheel drive rally car. I don't know why that's going to work and it's not going to work well, but it's going to be cool anyways. Uh, Multi-link rear suspension sounds pretty reasonable to start off with. Let's create a new engine now. Um, the meta in automation for making really powerful cars for a good price is having an inline engine. Of course, we have a Ferrari, Ferrari body, and I, I think inlines might be sacrilegious. Um, we, I, I think what we'll do, though, is an inline. You know what? We'll do an inline. Um... We can go for an inline 5 and inline 6, that'd be kind of good. Inline 5s are decent, inline 6s are really good. You know what, let's start with an inline 6 for now. It's going to be similar to, you know, Aston Martin used to have inline 6s, I think Jaguar used to have inline 6s in their coupes. So we'll do an inline 6, dual reverted cam, 4 valve, aluminum, uh, 5 valve actually. And let's bring it up to about 4 liters of displacement, because that's the max size for NA. And this thing is going to be a whale and a half, it's going to scream to as high as RPM as we possibly can. It's going to be just rear-wheel drive, I think. It might be all-wheel drive, but, you know, we'll see if we have the budget for that. VVT all cams. Now, the requirement's only, like, 16 MPG, so that's that's actually absolutely insanely low. Um, single direct injection. We'll go for premium fuel we have to have under the rules. Uh, again, I'll post the rules as we see fit on the page here. Long tube headers, high flow, three-way, and then we'll go none and none. We don't need any mufflers. Let's go for, like, what, a three and a half inch exhaust and the revs. Oh, glory, the revs. These are great revs. 9,000 RPM for an inline. We can go for an inline five. We could do an inline five. That sound kind of cool. We can go for a mid-engine inline five. I might switch to mid-engine. Like, we might switch to mid-engine. We still might. We can go for a wheel. We can't go for a wheel drive. Only for a rear. Okay, we'll, we'll do that for now. 3.7 liter inline five. That's quite large. It's still going to be very quite high revving. 9,000 RPM revving. Very, very, very... Great sounding. Higher cam profile. Let's actually lower it down to 90. Then increase the quality by 1. That sounds a little more reasonable. 20% engine efficiency. You know what? That's... We can go... You know, we'll go per cylinder. It's a little more expensive, but... Uh, it's just better. You know, we'll hold that. We'll just increase the fuel mixture very high, because it's fine if it's high. We can actually go to... That's the best. Okay. Let's give it 11.5 to 1 compression. High ignition timing. Let's go to 70. And let's just give it even higher compression here. So we've got 13 to 1 compression ratio. 430 horse. That's a good bit of power. Now, it's not as it's not as much as maybe as some Group B cars could be, but we are still tweaking the car. We could switch to turbo, but we'll stay NA for now. There's two body choices. we got a target top, I think. And we got this main one that's, that can be convertible, I guess. I don't know. We'll go for a dual clutch. Six speed, probably for now. Electric LSD. We might go to Viscous. It's cheaper. You can have semi-slicks or sports compound, because this is sort of a, it's a rally race, right? We're going to have a mixed surface, probably. Let's go to 315 to the back. No warnings at all. Very, the retires are very low profile. I mean, that's fine. 
Look at that. Not one issue right now. Not one issue. Those are some meaty tires, though. I think low profile is honestly pretty fine. Let's base them out, obviously, as well. And we're going to make this car look very beautiful. Like, I just want this car to look good. It might not be as crazy rally-esque as some other cars, but uh, this car just it just has to look good. Uh, we'll have engine discs up front and rear, four up front, two in the rear. We'll go for no under train. That just adds weight. We don't need top speed for rally cross. Um, let's go for basic interior, basic infotainment, because that's a better value for giving us the points we need. No power steering. We'll give it electronic stability control. We'll give it decent safety. And, like, just progressive, semi-active, and passive. So, we're not looking for the most realistic car today, as you probably can tell. We're looking for the best stats. We're looking for what's going to be the best on the actual track. We're, we're trying to find the best balance from for performance and dollar ratios. We're going to go down to a top speed of about... Well, we'll, we'll limit this here. We're going to go down to about 200 kilometers an hour, top speed, for now. Uh, if we have more budget, we'll change it up, because you don't really go too fast in rally. We're already over budget. 48k, we only have 46k for the budget. But 0 to 60 is respectable 4.4. That's not bad. We could go. We could switch it up. And we could do... Uh, mid-engine. We could go mid-engine. Let's do this. Let's grab the mid-engine one. Doesn't fit, obviously. Okay, it doesn't fit. How, how, how close are we to getting to fit mid-engine? Okay, it, it almost fits mid-engine. Uh, we'll make it a smaller 5-pot. We'll make it, you know what, we'll, we'll do a 2.5 turbo 5-pot. That sounds like a uh, Audi Quattro Rally-esque enough for us. I'm very indecisive today. I know, that's fine. 2.5 liter 5-pot turbo. We're gonna get so much more power to this thing, I feel like. It is knocking excessively. That's probably because we have very high compression. Let's go down to 11 compression. Oh, we're still knocking a lot. Lower this down a bit. And let's do... Oh, wait, we need ball bearing turbo, please. And let's lower the compression down even more. 10,000 RPM. What does it sound like? We, we gotta check. We gotta listen to this. We gotta listen. Yeah. I'll take it so far. It's gonna sound better in BMG, obviously. We still have all that stuff. It's good. A six-speed dual clutch. All-wheel drive. This has changed already a bit from what we wanted. The brakes are terrible. In the rear, at least. Let's, let's, let's play with the bias. Let's go to three pistons in the... Two pistons in the front. And play with the bias a little... No, no, let's go a little larger. Yeah, a little larger there. A little larger again. There we go, that's pretty good. So we do need 50 drivability, we need a 45 safety, 70 reliability, 16 MPG. Those are some numbers we do need. Let's make the gearing really short. So we're in all the rules, it looks like 3 seconds to 60 is decent. It's not the best that I've seen. I, I've done a test build with, with um, 2.7 to 60. We're under budget by a little bit. Uh, we could go to some different wheels to alloys. We're still 20, we're, we're a little heavy, 2,800 pounds. The, the car is a little heavy overall. This body's, I think, a little bit porky. But honestly, that's okay. I think what we're going to do is design... Oh, we've got a lot of octane to go with. What we're going to do is design the car. We're going to tweak the car, tweak all the stuff for the vehicle. 700 horsepower flat right now. Uh, yeah, so we're going to design the car. We're going to tweak the specs. I'll let you guys know what I tweak after. Uh, we'll do this in a quick time lapse. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what kind of specs we can get. So sit back, relax, guys. And, of course, as always, I hope you enjoy. And finally, we are designing my 2020 Groupie-esque rally car. And what we're starting off with is the smile of a front end. This thing is going to have the creepy smile that I'm known for in my Seder brand of vehicles. It's going to be a Seder brand of vehicle. I think Seder is an American brand, but they've got this thing where they design cars that don't really look American. They're trying to look exotic, um, and under the hood is exotic, but they are an American company through and through. So we're starting off with this big sort of U-shaped smile with these sort of almost vertical, sort of almost horizontal bars. Uh, near the headlight housing areas that we're going to have later on. Add in these uh, other smaller sort of smiles under, in the main smile itself. We'll call it the smile. We're adding more smiles within the smile. Adding our daytime running lights now or slash turn signals. Um, it's sort of like this boomerang almost shape that goes from the bottom grill into the actual main grill. Um, so basically we're just playing with a few things now on the front end. Uh, working on the side door now, making our own air intake. Which actually, this is my favorite part of the entire car at the end of the build, is the air intake. I just thought that was really cool, and I plan on doing this for more Seder builds in the future if I do ones. Uh, making our own door cutouts, because we want to cut out our own door lines, because it looks kind of weird without door lines. Um, that took a good bit of time to get actually get right, but I think it looks pretty good. We couldn't get it perfect. I'm um, just tinkering with some things already, adding uh, just some trimming and some piping on the primary grill, the top and bottom. Uh, and just turning it to black. Oh, the name is the Seder Prefaccia now. Uh, and just playing around with some headlights, just generic headlight shapes in the headlight housing. Um, these are just placeholders, they will get replaced eventually. 
just doing some more placeholder stuff. Uh, now I'm adding the actual headlight housing and seeing what I wanted for the headlights. The front end and the headlights especially, I'm not very happy with how the headlights turned out. They are these uh, two sort of circle-ish shapes, oval shapes, uh, with projectors inside them. They're both the primary headlights, I guess. There's no uh, there's no fog lamps. Just, there's, there's the primary headlights. Uh, playing with a few details on the hood, and then just adding some detail on the side air intakes, which are sort of teardrop shapes, which I think are kind of ugly. But Sater is not known for making beautiful cars. They're known for making very flashy, uh, exotic sports cars, hyper cars, race cars, I guess, in this case. And working on the rear end of the Sater, adding this sort of almost McLaren-esque rear end, but similar to my previous Sater vehicles. Uh, now tinkering with the car a little more. Um, just getting the power to about 500 horsepower now after we rebuilt the engine several times over and changing some other stats as well. Uh, adding the taillights, and this is almost the Seder C-shaped taillights on the front and rear. There's almost swooping lines with uh, three bars over, over across the rear taillight housing. Adding some mud flaps and opening up the entire rear end with a grill and an, and an exhaust tip. The grill's coming up, an exhaust tip. Uh, adding some more details there. It's going to be an open rear end, uh, similar to older Group B race cars. Um, and it's tinkering with the suspension and a bunch of other stuff to make sure the car, of course, fits in the spec to change the color to white. And still playing with the car design uh, and playing with some other things as well with the car. And in front of us finished is the 2020 Seder Prefaccia GT. Alright guys, like I said, the Seder Prefaccia is complete. In front of us, it looks a little bit awkward. It's got these sort of teardrop vents in the side with like this U-shaped really weird grin or smile in the front. It looks like some sort of wild animal. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's not a beautiful car. I don't think Seder ever makes beautiful cars. They make wild cars. Um, they don't make beautiful looking cars. The point of this car is to be flashy in your face. And, and I think it does that. It's definitely not beautiful. The front end might actually look even a little dated for 2020, but y you know, that's okay. We got the turn signals here. They work. Uh, they actually look kind of cool and they work on the mirrors too. Um, it is a bit more lifted than before. Uh, in the time lapse, we have a number 13 on the hood there, so it's got some sort of rally S features here. I don't like doing liveries or liveries for my cars. Um, one, because it's a lot of work, and two, because I just don't like how they look. I like cars that are just clean, one color. Um, maybe this car's race colors are black, red, and white. Uh, my favorite feature of the entire car is the door. Look at this door! I custom cut out the entire door sill all the way around, and it just has this really cool shape, and it sort of works with this, and the door handle's underneath there. It just looks super cool. I like the vent, too. Uh, I don't like the front that much. Uh, I like the back top. I don't like the back bottom, but I, I feel like they look good separately, but together it's kind of weird. Um, it's basically just a complete race car rally car in the back, which is mud flaps. Um, and one massive exhaust tip. It's it, it, the spec, so 500 horsepower, 2840 pounds, still double wishbone, still all-wheel drive, only a five-speed now. It's limited to 260, so it's actually limited a bit higher than before. We can actually probably even go like, I think a higher top speed. So we can go up to 270 kilometers an hour, which is one of the higher top speeds I think of all the cars, um, because we had the budget for it, and honestly, why not? Uh, I give us some more drivability as well. Uh, so we are electric LSD, we are 30 front, 70 rear weight distribu or, uh, power distribution now. Uh, 0 to 60 is 2.7 seconds, very quick acceleration. Um, the, the, the engine has been tuned, so it's a 2.5 liter inline 5 still. Um, I played around with the V10s, etc. But it's only got 500 horsepower, but it makes the power uh, earlier on. It starts making it, it makes the torque a lot earlier on. It's not like this crazy, super laggy engine. It's still quite laggy, but not crazy laggy. Uh, we got this big scoop in the roof here, which I think kind of looks kind of cool to back. Like, it looks good. I think the car overall looks pretty good. The front is, yeah. I don't think I'm digging the headlights at all, but you know what? It, it's fine. It's fine. I can. I think we can all agree this car is not beautiful. Uh, it's not pretending to be beautiful. It's a Seder. It does what it does best, and it's fast. Um, so yeah, the other, other things that are changed is still got medium compounds, 19-inch wheels, quite big, 295s in the rear. It's all discs, though, not vented discs. I know, I know. It's pretty crazy, right? But uh, we didn't really have the budget. We could, we could actually lower the top speed, but I kind of like having the high top speed for funsies. 
Um, it's got 50% sporting's break fade, and that's that's probably going to be terrible, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, so what we're going to do is hop into BMG just for one quick test. Uh, all these cars are going to be live streamed in about a, in a, in a few weeks or so, in about a month or so actually, is when the challenge is over. In the Community Challenges channel, you guys can find the rules for the challenge in there. Follow that, send in a car to the Google Forms link, and your car will be tested in a few weeks' time. Make sure it fits all the rules. Please, 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 make sure it fits the rules. Um, my car fits, I think, all the rules. It, I, I might have to tweak it a tiny bit. It needs one t tiny tweak, I think. It needs... Uh, 0.1 drivability, so we gotta have the 50 drivability. It's gonna have all the rules fitting. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys what track we're testing this this car on. It's gonna be a, you know, a, a rally circuit. It could be a little bit of paved, could be a little bit of off-roading, etc. Uh, we're gonna hop into Beam and G and just test it just on a generic course to see how this thing drives and see how, you know, if it drives decent or not. I'll see you guys in Beam and G in just a sec. Finally, we're here in BMG Drive with the Seder Prefetcha GT. Actually, it looks much better in BMG. You know what? It doesn't look that bad. Um, it's a bit of an ungainly front end, but it actually looks kind of decent. The 13 looks great. The side looks pretty good. The back looks decent. Everything actually looks much better in BMG than it does in automation. I think I'm just much happier. This is actually probably one of my favorite cars in BMG. It doesn't look half bad. Maybe if I got rid of those teardrop vents. Um, so we are in an undisclosed location on an undisclosed rally circuit. It's a mod map. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's just a mod map. It's just on the repository. Um, it's got a mix of asphalt and dirt. It's not the best rally course, and this is not the one we're actually using for the challenge. I'm not going to tell you guys what we're using so you can't, uh, practice on that course with your car. I don't want anyone to have any advantages because some people don't have even drive. We're going to launch her. We're just doing two laps just to see how uh, this thing drives in general. It's not going to drive well, and I probably will tune it again for the actual live stream because it does not drive well. But it drives well. I'll give it that. And it makes some pretty awesome sounding pops and bangs. Like, you know, like race cars do. Look at those pops and bangs. Banging off the red line real quick. We butchered that corner really badly, but you know what? We're going to keep going anyways. It's pretty quick, honestly, it's not as quick as I would have liked. But it's not bad! Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this rally racing kind of thing, you know? Maybe I should be a pro, a pro rally driver, honestly. That'd be a step up. But yeah, no, it, uh, it's, it's this kind of track where it's, it, it's mixed service. I don't know if, what the actual distribution will be, but I really hate this course for the actual guardrails, because they are a pain in the half if you just go over. But, not bad. Just a quick test. Um, this video was more about just announcing the challenge. If you guys want to hop in the challenge, you guys are welcome to join the challenge. You have to join the Discord, though. Link in the description. You gotta have a Gmail account to submit your car. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to see uh, maybe a, a proper rally car in the future, let me know. Maybe I'll make... If you guys, if you guys want to see like a, a JDM rally sedan, like an Evo or a Subaru. I've made one a long time ago, but it was terrible. I think I can make a lot better of one now, especially with the new turbo update coming in automation. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, leave a like down below. Uh, let me know what you want to see also in the comments. If you want to see something different, just send, leave me a comment. Ask how my day is, and I'll ask how your day is. We'll have a chit chat, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, make sure to leave a like if you guys watched it all the way through, because if you guys haven't liked it and watched it all the way through, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, also, subscribe if you guys made it this far. You probably should subscribe. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you guys in the challenge. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.